to the shop, guys. I don't feel like actually doing anything tonight. So instead, I'm going to yak for a little bit, because I know y'all love that. And I'm going to introduce you to a project that literally showed up on my doorstep. Any of you who follow the podcast with Justin and myself um, may have overheard me mention this. An extremely generous viewer who wishes to remain anonymous told me about this machine and asked if I might be interested in it, knowing that it needed some TLC. And I got pretty excited about it. And he agreed to send it to me, and here it is. At face value, you look at it, and it's obviously a watchmaker's milling machine. It has a little bit of an interesting story, though. It's not quite that cut and dry. This assembly here, the base and the table, the XY slides, are tagged with E.F. Hager and Son, Queens Village, Long Island, New York. And apparently somewhere in here is a patent number. I haven't come across it yet, um, but the fellow who uh, gave this to me um, <clears throat> sent me the patent number by email. And if you look at the patent, it's spitting image of this from here down, but the patent is for what's basically a toolmaker's microscope, obviously an incredibly over-engineered and overbuilt one, and from here up would have originally been a microscope head. Somewhere along the way, prior to the guy I got it from uh, owning it, I believe, it was converted to a watchmaker's mill in a rather interesting fashion. When I received it, there was this spacer block on top of the column base, whatever we're calling this part here, and these really nicely made uh, XY slides from something, certainly not this machine originally, very interesting casting with this boss that almost looks like it's for a hinged pivot. Rather than being sort of mounted with these keyways and dovetails that are on it, it was uh, drilled through and bolted into place. So there was some, um, some travel on the slides in this direction, but this top slide here was not used at all, and these top dovetails were drilled and tapped through. Then the vertical slide with the tilting milling head on it was attached like so. This has a spindle cartridge. This whole cartridge comes out and there's a pair of ball bearings in it. The spindle itself, you can see right here. It came with one collet and the closer nut. And what it appears somebody did was take a collet chuck for these things. I'm assuming a commercially available one since if they made their own, they might as well have just made it part of the spindle in the first place. And they welded it on to this spindle. This spindle is pretty soft steel. It's not hardened at all. And given that it's running in some dirt cheap 6202 bearings, I'm assuming that this whole cartridge was repurposed from something else and the spindle made specifically for this machine. Whatever the story though, this collet closer, a separate piece, was welded onto the end of the spindle and not welded with a lot of care given to concentricity. The weeble wobbled pretty good. So as I mentioned, the bearings in here, 6202s, they are um, just plain old ball bearings rather than uh, angular contact bearings, which is really what would be preferable. 
The vertical slide for the head here has none of the hardware for a feed mechanism. So it has no feed screw or retaining plate or anything like that. And the Y-axis hand wheel here is nowhere to be seen. And this sort of hodgepodge of spacing blocks here. <clears throat> so those are some of the points that need to be addressed. And obviously there's no motor with it either. It came with this um, very simply made vise here. I think it was set up for a very specific task, the way it had these steps cut into the jaws here. Uh, I cleaned this up a little bit and I'm going to be sending it to a buddy of mine who can maybe make use of it. This is so tall that I think it was, I suspect it was a lot of the reason for having so much in the way of riser blocks back here. Really, I want this whole uh, milling head and vertical slide to be down quite a bit lower to get the spindle closer to the table. You know, this machine like this should really have some pretty low profile uh, work holding arrangements. The machine itself is just incredibly well made. One really strange thing, probably can't really see it from that angle, but first of all, it's very heavy. You see how the, the y-axis slide goes sort of underneath the x-axis slide in the table? Like there's a bridge over it? When you move the y-axis, you're not moving the table, you're moving the, the column with the, the milling head. Really bizarre. All of the slides are really nicely dovetailed with very, very little evidence of any wear. All of the, the scraping is still very sharp and, and visible. The colossal hand wheels here are pretty incredible. The lead, this is a, a metric machine. The lead screws are one millimeter pitch and the graduations around the dial give one hundredth of a millimeter increments. So it's pretty fine resolution. This is going to be a pretty incredible little machine. I've always wanted a little watchmaker's mill like this, like a, like a proper one. Now it's going to be obviously a Franken machine, but uh, I, I don't care. I'm not a purist like that. I, I like saving old machines and keeping them original if they warrant it, but in this case, uh, it already is what it is, and I might as well bring it back into service as a mill that can be useful for me. So that's my plan. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on getting this up and running, including making all of the parts that I need to for it. I'm going to make a single um, adapter and uh, spacer block to go between the base casting here and the vertical slide. I don't think that I'm going to have it utilize any uh, dovetail adjustment this way. I'm going to try to get things spaced out so that that's not necessary. I mean, the, just the, the travel that this already has in the y-axis is uh, as much as the x-axis has. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm extremely grateful to the viewer who sent this to me. I've got a box full of parts that uh, is most everything I need to get this up and going, minus a few small items. Let's show you that. Just like magic, we have a box. This is a length of 1144 stress-proof steel, which I have never had the pleasure of working with before, but I hear it's marvelous stuff. This will be the spindle for the machine. I'm going to be making a larger spindle, larger diameter-wise spindle, than the one that's uh, in it now. 
I already didn't like the bearings that were in this. Since I was replacing them and making the spindle anyways, it was no big deal to go to a larger diameter spindle as long as I could find bearings that fit. So I've got a pair of 7003 ABEC 5 angular contact bearings here. They're the same OD as the bearings that are in here already, so they'll fit this spindle cartridge without needing to modify it. And they have a, I believe it's a 17 millimeter ID, so substantially bigger diameter than what was in there. And it'll give me plenty of meat to turn a, an integral ER11 collet taper in it. Instead of fiddling around making the ER collet nut, We've got a commercially available one here. And we've got a set of Hangzhou Charlie's finest ER11 collets here. You can read about the dimensions of these and it still doesn't really give you a sense for just how tiny they are until you have them in your hand. Pretty cool. I have a Bodine variable speed DC motor controller and a super nice little Bodine 130 volt brushless DC motor, 2500 RPMs. I believe this was a 16th or 12th of a horsepower. Great little motor to use on something like this. I got this motor and the controller both surplus on eBay. Unfortunately, I didn't really do my homework very well on the speed controller here, and I did not appreciate at all that this is just a plain Jane uh, PWM speed control unit. A very nice one, but um, this is not a brushless DC controller. What I've got now is a really nice speed control unit for a brushed DC motor and a really nice brushless DC motor. I definitely have plenty of uses for this stuff, but as far as which of these I'm going to use on this mill, I'm not sure yet. My preference is to use this motor with the appropriate controller on the mill, and perhaps I will take this speed control unit and use it for another project such as power feed for the mini mill, the little machine shop mill. Um, time will tell how that plays out. A little aggravated with myself for um, you know, not doing research like I should have on this uh, controller unit, but it's still a really nice unit and it'll come in handy. So that's really it. I don't know when I'm going to get into the actual doing stuff part of this project. I've got a lot of other things that I want to get done first. I suspect that the first machining work I do on this project will be to make the spindle. But again, time will tell. And if I can get the machine powered up and running, then I'll have to make something for work holding. Uh, I really like the idea of making a miniature low-profile uh, vise of some sort, probably a screw-type vise, and then maybe make a low-profile um, step clamp kit to go with it too. But that'll be way down the road. I'll, I'll be happy to begin with just to get this machine um, functional and running. Anyway, I think that's about all the yakin that I care to do on the subject right now. And thanks for watching. Please uh, comment, let me know what you think of this whole project here, and we'll talk to you next time.